It's January 12, 2013. We're at Sports Authority Field in Denver, Colorado. Tied at 35 in double overtime, a successful field goal would send the Baltimore Ravens to the AFC Championship and leave the hometown Broncos an easy commute back to the crib. To truly understand what comes next, we have to explore the absurdities that got us here. To do that, we need to rewind. Maybe I was a little too chill earlier because a double overtime playoff game ain't normal. This is only the sixth time it's ever happened in NFL history. If you back up to the fourth quarter of this game, being in double OT seems even more unreal. Down seven with less than a minute to play and no timeouts, Ravens QB Joe Flacco needed to work some magic, which isn't his specialty. After being drafted 18th overall in 2008, Flacco immediately took over as Baltimore starter. He's helped steer the franchise to several winning seasons, but has constantly been labeled as a game manager. It seems like a flattering title, but journalists essentially viewed Flacco as a dude who avoided risk and therefore missed out on potential rewards, especially in the postseason where he wasn't as careful with the ball. During the 2011 season, the Ravens lost the conference championship to the Patriots but Flacco outperformed Tom Brady. He proved he could hang with the league's upper echelon QBs, and with a developing supporting cast reaching this form, Flacco continued to ball this postseason. In their first round matchup against the Colts, veteran wideout Anquan Bolden, who was in his third season with Baltimore, had a monster performance snagging half of Flacco's passing yards. Tonight against Denver, it was second-year speedster Torrey Smith linking up with Flacco on two giant touchdowns for 59 and 32 yards respectively in the first half. In a crazy back-and-forth matchup, besides a botched snap in the third quarter, Flacco has again proven he's more than just a game manager. But as Baltimore trailed late with no timeouts, Flacco had to lean on his weapons in a pivotal spot. Faced with third down at their 30-yard line, the Ravens at the very least needed to move the chains to avoid a crucial fourth down, but more than anything, they desperately had to get upfield and fast. To his left, Flacco's got Smith and Bolden. Lined up inside to his right was tight end Dennis Pitta. He's a big target with reliable hands, but lacks speed. Set up furthest out wide to the right is newcomer Jacoby Jones. What's his deal? Drafted in 2007, Jones spent five semi-productive seasons with the Houston Texans, but was eventually released from the team in 2012. In a divisional round matchup against the Ravens last season, Jones badly fumbled two punts that contributed to Houston's defeat. Still, as a solid return specialist, Jones possessed incredible speed and the Ravens saw his potential ultimately signing him to a two-year deal. Jones looked forward to a fresh start with his new squad, and the change of scenery paid off. With Baltimore, Jones lit up the league, setting historic marks, earning a spot in the Pro Bowl. He's been a major addition to the Ravens, but tonight, Jacoby's been a bit of a liability. After the Broncos took an early 7-0 lead, Jones tried to answer back, but fumbled the kickoff as the ball bounced off his chest, forcing Baltimore to start at their 6-yard line. He isn't expected to be an elite receiver, but Jones failed to take advantage of his opportunities. As the Ravens trailed late in the fourth, Flacco tried to connect with Jones on a short pass that hit him dead in the hands, but he dropped it. Maybe he would have been just short of a first, but it didn't help that Baltimore turned the ball over on downs with their next play. Yet, Jones found his way on the field during a decisive third down. On the play, Flacco dropped back and evaded pressure before launching the ball towards Jones, who had his man B, but wait. Another defensive back came in hot and appeared to have a great angle to make a play, never mind. The defender misjudged the pass as the ball flew right over his outstretched arms, leaving Jones a clear path to the end zone. That is stunning. The Broncos' safety read the pass terribly, but Jones created the separation, leading to the game-tying touchdown. Incredibly, Baltimore is in the highly unlikely spot to kick their way to the conference championship. Miracle reception aside, no one expected the Ravens to have a fighting chance in this game. After falling just short of the Super Bowl last year, media members believe Baltimore can make another deep playoff run this year, except the Ravens just couldn't stay consistent. 
Following a 5-1 start to the season, Baltimore lost their defensive rock Ray Lewis in a Week 6 win over the Cowboys. At 37 years old, the longtime veteran might have lost a step, but his importance as a coach on the field couldn't be quantified. Without Lewis, the Ravens lost their identity defensively and finished terribly down the final stretch of the season, including an ass-whooping at home against Denver. Offensively, it also didn't help they regressed to a point where the org felt forced to make a late-season coaching change. They might have limped into the postseason, but the team found extra motivation from their captain. After being sidelined for most of the year, Lewis intended to return for the playoffs, but announced his plan to retire once the season wrapped. Despite entering this game against Denver as underdogs, Baltimore's defense capitalized off turnovers to stay right in the thick of it. Following Flacco's first TD to Smith, the Ravens returned an interception for a touchdown to take the lead. Then later in the third quarter, forced a fumble near midfield. Five plays later, Baltimore punched in a touchdown to tie the game. The Ravens' defense allowed a late fourth-quarter touchdown on a drive kept alive by a pass interference penalty, but in overtime, they came to play. Neither team showed much life offensively, with both their opening drives ending in punts. On Baltimore's second possession, they escaped being backed up near their end zone, but again stalled out. The Ravens pinned the Broncos at the seven-yard line with their punt, but Denver strung together a strong drive. As the first overtime neared an end, any points would win the game, and the Broncos appeared ready to close this thing out. Lined up in shotgun on second down, Broncos QB Peyton Manning rolled out of the pocket to avoid pressure and threw a pass across his body that landed in the hands of Ravens cornerback Corey Graham. It was Graham's second interception of the game, but easily the most important one. After six plays, Baltimore worked their way deeper into Denver's territory, bringing us here. Neither fans nor journalists expected the Broncos to be in this spot in what's otherwise been a marvelous season. Denver entered this year with a fresh start. Last season, quarterback Tim Tebow captured the nation's attention, leading the Broncos to an unexpected playoff berth with a dramatic overtime win in the first round. But after Denver flamed out the following week, media members believed Tebow could only take the Broncos so far, and the franchise agreed. During the offseason, Broncos brass went after Peyton Manning, who had been released by the Colts, ultimately signing him to a five-year deal. The Super Bowl winning quarterback had severe neck issues, missed the entire season last year, and as he entered the back half of his 30s, journalists didn't know what to expect in his return. Plus, when Manning did hit the field, he didn't show much promise. Denver started the season 2-3, which included an early loss where Manning tossed three picks. With each L, media members wondered if Manning's passing velocity would ever be the same and if the team needed to reevaluate his future. Then it all clicked. After a rough start, Denver ran off 11 straight wins to finish the year, with Manning leading one of the league's best offenses. More impressively, besides Manning dicing up teams, Denver also fielded a top five defense and didn't allow any team to come within a touchdown of beating them. With strong units on both sides of the ball, the Broncos cruised into the playoffs earning the one seed and entered this matchup against Baltimore as heavy favorites. And to pop things off in this game, Denver got support from their special teams with a record-setting 90-yard punt return from Trenton Holiday to take an early lead. However, when Manning and the offense hit the field, things didn't go as smoothly. Manning's second pass of the matchup resulted in Baltimore's defense going the other way for a touchdown to take control. The pick six wasn't completely Manning's fault as the pass got deflected, and afterward, the longtime vet settled in. On Denver's following drive, Manning picked apart Baltimore's secondary, dinking and dunking down the field before taking a shot in the back of the end zone to even the game. Later in the second quarter, Manning again feasted on short and medium routes, eventually dropping another dime to take the lead. As both teams entered halftime tied at 21, Denver again got scoring help from Holiday with another record-breaking return to open the third quarter. Explosive plays have been the norm for this game, and as the Broncos looked to pull away, an uncharacteristic mistake by Manning kept Baltimore alive. Looking to extend Denver's lead in the third, 
Manning dropped back and pump fake to avoid pressure, but as he brought his arm down, a Ravens defender poked the ball out of his hands. That type of carelessness isn't expected of Manning, and while it was a crucial mistake, he atoned for the fumble later in the fourth quarter. With the game tied at 28, Manning led a 10-play drive covering nearly the length of the field that ended with a 17-yard strike, giving Denver the lead. That TD appeared to be the final nail in the coffin, but yeah. Still, after Jacoby's touchdown, the Broncos had 31 seconds on the clock and two timeouts to work their own magic. Instead, Denver took a knee, playing for overtime. I mean, Tebow won an overtime playoff game on this field just last year, so why not give one of the league's best quarterbacks proper time to try and win the game? Well, after nearly an entire overtime period, that happened. With each mistake Manning made in regulation, he fired back almost immediately. But with that costly interception, it appeared Denver was running out of time. Which brings us here. Baltimore's fate now lies on the leg of rookie kicker Justin Tucker. It's an extremely nerve-wracking spot to be in for a first-year starter, but the Ravens brought Tucker here for these exact moments. Special teams mistakes cost the Ravens a shot at the Super Bowl last season. Down three in the final seconds of the conference championship against New England, Baltimore lost devastatingly when kicker Billy Cundiff shanked the 32-yard field goal that would have sent the game to overtime. Cundiff remained on the roster, but Baltimore brought in some competition, signing undrafted free agent Justin Tucker this offseason. Despite finishing with a strong college career, Tucker didn't receive an invite to the NFL Combine. He took a different route, filming an unedited self-promotional video nailing field goals from different ranges before confidently staring into the camera and saying, pick me. The video clearly didn't work because he didn't get drafted, but Tucker shined in preseason play with the Ravens, beating out Cundiff for the starting job, a decision that worked out well for Baltimore. In his debut season, Tucker proved to be an extremely accurate kicker you can count on in the clutch. Tucker helped get revenge against New England in week three when he drilled a game-winning kick with two seconds to play. Later in the season, he did the same against the Chargers, nailing the game-tying and game-winning field goal at the end of regulation and in overtime. This 47-yarder to send Baltimore to the conference championship is certainly on a grander stage, but Tucker has proved he can thrive in these moments. If he sinks this, it'll cap off a miraculous victory for the Ravens in a game they had no business being in. If he misses, Manning and the Broncos will have another shot to save what's been a storybook comeback season for the legendary QB. We've seen plenty of wackiness in this game already, so nothing is guaranteed. Welcome to a moment in history. Kick is on its way and it looks good. The Baltimore Ravens have come into Denver and reached the AFC Championship game for the second straight year. What up, y'all? Thanks for watching this episode of Rewinder. I know I mentioned that Tim Tebow overtime win a few times here, and guess what? We got a video for that, so check that out. And if you want to see just how badly that missed field goal was by the Ravens in the conference championship, we also have a video on that. So make sure to like and subscribe, and keep on coming back.